Hi everybody, welcome along, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I have to say ladies and gentlemen because I now have apparently 98% subscribers are male and 1.6% are female. So uh, I now have to say ladies and gentlemen to take in for those um, those female type people. Um, so yeah, hi. Um, bit, bit of a while since I've done an update. I just want to say a big massive thank you to all of you guys that have subscribed. Uh, it's amazing. Um, it's over 1,411. Uh, 1,416 I think it is as I'm speaking now. Um, today is Tuesday, February the 5th, 2019. Um, and when you bear in mind that's nearly a thousand more than I had on Christmas Day, um, I'm, I'm impressed. So obviously something's right here. Um, if you guys want to see things change for the even better and try and get this channel to grow even faster, then please just leave your comments and, and tell me what you want to see. Um, some of you who've been watching me for a while, and I thank you guys. I'm not going to name you personally, but you know who you are, the ones that have been with me from the start. Um... You'll see I've got a new shelving unit behind me, uh, makes things look a bit tidier, I think. And you can see that there's quite a nice array of uh, kits there, particularly some nice American bombers and some Russian military stuff and yeah, all sorts. Um, some of it is started, a few of those kits are started, not all of it. Um, if you want to see any of those built, reviewed, whatever, then... Uh, just, just drop me a line. I've also got a whole lot of Wingnut Wings kits, but I keep those in a dark cupboard out of the sunlight so they don't, um, the boxes don't get faded. Right, so um, yeah, because my sub number's gone up, now I am doing adverts, uh, as you know, as you've probably noticed. And when you do YouTube uh, videos, when you get to a thousand, you are given the option to add adverts to your videos. And it's called monetizing and you get paid for it. And it's it's not a living wage. Um, it's a very, very small amount of money until you get up into the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. I don't know. You hear all these rumors about people earning $10,000 a month and stuff. I, I don't know. Um, all I can tell you is it's it, it, put it this way. I've, I've been monetized now for a week and the money I've got would probably buy two of us a McDonald's meal. So, yeah, in America, not in the UK, not at UK prices. We just buy me a McDonald's meal at UK prices. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's it's not a massive amount of money. It's not a living wage. It never will be. I never thought it would be. Um, but it's nice to have something coming back. And it's my intention to put that money back into the channel, i.e. I need to get a nice microphone. I need better lighting. And I also need to look at getting a, a really good camera so that I can perhaps start doing some live stuff. Maybe do a, a live build or whatever, or, a, you know, a, maybe an all day Saturday or a 24 hour build or something, you know, just something to, to really get the juices flowing and get people watching and subscribing and getting dressed going. Because this is the way it goes. The more you the more you get going, the more subscribers you get, the more interest you get the more people want to give you products to review and then you get people wanting a sponsor and it just grows and grows and grows and that's what I want to happen um, as you, some of you will know I, I stopped working in December last year um, as you know it's now February uh, I don't care if I never go back to work again um, I'm 55 and could happily retire and who knows maybe YouTube could um, could finance my retirement I don't know that's probably just a dream um so yeah um ads I have got ads on the channel something that really really grips my mm, really gets me going is when you're watching a video and you get adverts come on through it through the middle of it I hate it um quite often if I see a channel on that has adverts coming on I'll not watch it again um, if they have the little bar that comes across the bottom of the screen, you know, you can just click on that and it disappears. That's fine. But to actually have skippable ads coming on during the video, especially that Chinese bloody dancing thing, to have skippable ads coming on during the video really, really annoys me. And I would never, ever do that to you guys. I won't ever have skippable ads coming on during a video. 
Um, the other one I don't like is non-skippable ads. You know, you have to sit there and wait for the video to finish. So um, I'll keep it reasonable. I will have skippable ads at the beginning and you'll have the little things come up across the bottom once or twice during the video. And that'll be that. Um, unless, of course, I'm planning a big uh, world cruise or something and I need to make all the money I can. Then I'll put videos every 20 seconds. You know, I was watching something the other day. A guy had recorded the BBC News Night, which is a, a one hour programme. And he had an ad like every 10 minutes. He had a, an actual video. I think it was even non skippable. It was ridiculous. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, and another thing I do about, thought about doing was um, opening you guys up so you can have questions. Ask me questions about stuff. And I've set up a new email address. It's Nigel's Modeling Bench, no hyphen, just Nigel's Modeling Bench, all one word, at gmail.com. So that's Nigel's Modeling Bench at gmail.com. So if you want to email any questions, I can read them out on here and uh, give you the answers um, and, and go from there. And then you'll be helping other people along the way. And just remember, there's no such thing as a stupid question. There's only stupid answers. Um... So yeah, why are we here? Um, I've started a fun build. As you know, uh, the fun build I did start was the 72nd scale Ravel Lancaster. And oh dear, that couldn't be a fun build. I had to do some mods on it and I'm sure you've seen it. And uh, it's turned out to be a great kit. Um, well, it's turned out to be a lovely model. It's not a great kit. I've turned it into a lovely model with a, a few little sort of simple you know changes and you should be having a go at that you should be going out and buying that kit and having a go because it's not difficult and you can build something that you can put your own name to that has no added extras no aftermarket it was just your skill and your ingenuity that made that kit what it was and it wasn't just something but out of the box so go do it um and as you can see up here, somewhere was it at the top of that, above that typhoon, I've got the Airfix uh, Dam Busters Lancaster. And I've also bought the B2, which is the Radial Engine version, which has just arrived in the post today. Uh, so I'll get a review up of that maybe later on tonight. Um, so you'll see that tonight, tomorrow, whatever. Um, the reason I'm here now, I've started another fun build, as I, as I was saying an hour ago. Um, it's a... Uh, Spitfire, it's this kit here, it's the Hobby Boss Spitfire Mark V and the reason I've picked on this one is because it's a cheap, small, fairly simple kit and I really really want a 30 second scale brown and green Spitfire in my collection. Now this was in my stash, if I'd have needed another one I probably would have got the Ravel kit Although apparently it's got issues, I, I don't know what the issues are, but apparently it's covered in issues. But I think it's like 17 quid for a 30 second scale fighter. I mean, you know, when you think the Tamiya Spitfire is £115, I think on Amazon. You know, it's great. And this, this I think this is like 30 quid, this one. So, um, yeah, I've done a video here. I'm only too aware that my videos could end up going, you know, part after part after part after part. This is going to be three parts tops. So in this part, we're doing a lot of the major assembly. The second part will be finishing off the assembly completely. And then the third part will be the painting, deckling and the weathering. So this will be three parts max. The max it could be is four parts. If, if I decide to paint it and decal it in one video and it ends up being quite a long video, I'll cut it off and then I'll do a fourth part for the weathering. The problem is with this, guys, if you do YouTube videos, you'll know. When you start doing videos that get up to like an hour long, like this one is, it takes forever to edit, it takes forever to render, and it takes forever to load. So, um, you know, you end up, you can't do anything with your computer because it just, I, I haven't got a very massive PC. It just locks the computer up. You can't do anything. You can't go and watch, you know, um, your Amazon Fire Stick or anything if you're uploading to YouTube because it's all, you know, it jams it all up. You can, but if you're watching, like that, you know, so you don't really want to be watching stuff like that, do you? That was a good impression, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, um... So yeah, enjoy this video, and like I say, get your questions over to me, nigelsmodelingbench at gmail.com, and, and I'll answer them for you um, 
online, you know, and, and on on the, on this channel. And if you want to, um, we can we can have a, I don't know, we can set up a day, say every Monday afternoon or Monday evening or something. We'll do a um a, a questions and answers. Um, obviously it won't be live because I don't have the ability to do live. When I get a camera, then then maybe if if it gets big, then we can do it then. But um, then yeah, it's gonna grow and grow. Um. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think you guys are really enjoying it too. So uh, anyway, enough of the waffling. I'm going to bugger off now. Um, enjoy this video. Flick through bits if you need to. Um, it's it's 50 odd minutes of um, of building and painting and decaling. And I also show you how I do annealing brass on the seat belts and everything. So uh, yeah, so enjoy. And I'll catch you later. Bye bye. All right, so let's make a start on this thing then. Um, stage one of the uh, stage one and stage two of the instructions is obviously the cockpit, as you can see here. And um, we're going to assemble the seat. We're going to assemble the seat mounting. Um, we've got some photo etch to go on here. We've got photo etch seat belts which have to be assembled. Uh, headrest going on there, and then we've got our rudder pedals and the mechanism going under the seat. So my plan is to do all of this. Um, and then paint it because basically I don't want to be painting each and every, every individual part and then um, and then having to you know assemble it all and then clean up where the glue and everything was. So the plan is just paint the whole thing in uh, cockpit green XF seventy one Tamiya, and then what I'll do is I'll pick out the um, the seat with the brush and I'll find or I'll mix a, a, some Revel paint and I'll I'll do that on camera and show you just how wonderful that stuff is. Um, it's my new favourite go-to paint for brushing. So um, I'll get on and get all this put together now. And then once it's painted and everything, after I've shown you that, we'll do the harnesses and I'll show you how I anneal the brass and everything and, and make it all soft and pliable. All right, so I'll see you in a second. And there we go, guys. There's the interior. Um, looks like the seat is designed for a fat bloke. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's a little bit too wide. Um, it just doesn't look right. I'm not sure that cushioning on the back is very good either, but the headrest looks okay. So I'm definitely going to do this closed up, canopy closed. Um, I don't think you know there's sort of much to see in there really. So I'll get all this painted green now and then uh, fit the harness. Here's the, um, I haven't glued the instrument panel on yet. Not quite sure what this lever is here. But um, yeah, the uh, rudder mechanism there, um, the control stick, and um, or control column should I say. Rudder pedals in there. So that's all done, it's quite not too bad an instrument panel. Let's say I've got some decals to go in there, yet to decide what to do with them. And as I'm going to be spraying the green, I took the liberty of um, putting the wing on, the or putting the wing on, getting the wing off the sprue, should I say. It tells you to drill some holes here, these three, for the air intake. I guess the tropical one has these holes drilled. And then you've got these two slots here. Um, there for the bomb. I don't want to put the bomb on mine, so I've left them um, uncut. So I've just got the ordinary uh, surface detail on the bottom of there. Um, and then uh, I also took the liberty to do the inside, the interior sides. They're not so bad. Um, not quite to scale. Nothing like the detail of the Tamiya kit, but you know, all the same, it's there. Um, and then you've got the fuel tank that should go in, but I'm probably not going to bother. Uh, because there's no way you're going to see it. Um, so yeah, that's all the, that's all done there. Um, I did put the radio in and put a support on it to support it to keep it from uh, breaking off. And then realised, well, hang on, I'm not going to see it because so I've added the the outer door anyway. So I've done that, and I also took the liberty of chucking a bit of riveting on the um, on the uh, crew, the pilot's access flap there, and um, just just chuck some rivet on it just so it looks a bit more interesting and um and then put the door in as i say this is a fun build i'm not fussed about accuracy i'm not fussed about getting everything perfect um it's just a case of i just want to i just want a 30 second scale brown and green spitfire that's all um if they'd have had the revel one in stock at antics i would have got it but i had this one in the stash so um and then we've got the gun sight here little uh, tiny gun sight yet to put the clear part in after it's painted so that's all that done all ready for paint and um, so I'll get all that painted also with the fuselage if we look at the if we look at the hobby boss instructions 
it tells you here to do all interior green but if you look at the Tami instructions for the Mark 9 they tell you to paint up to their silver so I'm going to do that I'm going to do the rear section of the fuselage silver not that you're going to see much of it but that'll be done silver and then the um, the rest of the cockpit will be green and here we are so we've now got the tail wheel in and as you can see we've got the silver paint and the green paint on the fuselage halves we've also got the silver paint and the green paint on the wing we've got the green paint on the cockpit here's the rear bulkhead and then there's the the seat mounting and everything with the seat on it um, obviously we've got to do a lot of detail painting now um, I'm kind of ignoring the Hobby Boss instructions as far as colours go. They're telling you to do this one silver. Um, the Tamiya Spitfire tells you to paint this rear bulkhead green. So I'm also concerned about when they actually tell you to paint the fuselage. They tell you to paint the whole thing green. And this area behind I think should be silver. So um, I know the Tamiya kit is a Mark 9. And this is a Mark V, but um, if you look at Spitfire history, the Mark IX and the Mark V I think are pretty consecutive, as the eight came after the nine, and I think the seven came after the eight. I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot, a lot of history, and I'm sure I'm going to get a million comments now because there's so many people out there that know so much. Um, yeah, it's like it's telling you these bottles of silver. I think they're supposed to be light grey. Uh, obviously, I'll paint the radio black. I'll pick out all the details and everything as it should be. Um, I've got a feeling that trim wheel should be like a, a red-brown colour. So, um, yeah, we'll get on with that. Um, the paint on here is Tamiya XF71 for the um, for the green. And this is the... It's actually the first time I've used it. Ignore this here. I first tried using the Revell silver paint um, mixed with water and didn't like it. So I mixed it with some thinner... Didn't like it. It's very, very grainy. It's got a very, very coarse. It's like the Tamiya XF16. Very, very grainy. So I actually used, in the end, this one, which is the... Um, this is the Extreme Metal Aluminium. Uh, this is an enamel paint, so you need to be a little careful if you're using oil washes and stuff. So really, it's going to need a, a coat of satin varnish before I do anything else. Um... And that way then when I give it a wash and everything, it'll, I know I'm all safe. So um, I'll get that all varnished up now. Um, just a matter of interest, here's the the table for the Lancaster with the wood effect on it. You can see I've put like a wood grain effect on it. And um, obviously it's got to be painted green and then I'll wear away a little patch. Where the, uh, I'll wear away a patch where the navigator's been and perhaps put a few chips and stuff around it. Um... But yeah, I always like to do this. So I've got the wood grain effect. That will show through under the green paint. And then when I rub it away, you'll see the uh, the wood grain coming through. Um, so yeah, that's about that. Um, another bit of work there on the, one of the wheels for the Lancaster cockpit. So um, yeah, it's all coming together now. And uh, so I'll get this varnished up and then I'll come back and uh, do some detail painting with you. Right, so I've put the... Um, semi-gloss varnish on you can see it's like a Saturn Saturn it's uh, Tamiya XF86 I think no it's X35 XF86 is the mat Tamiya X35 um, satin clear or semi-gloss clear awesome stuff it is I mean if you look at it it's got a very very gentle sheen to it it is lovely and it's very hard wearing and it's perfect for doing um, pre-weathering stuff and while I think of it, one other thing, I said in my previous snip that this rear bulkhead should be green. Um, it's not, it should be silver. I did my Tamiya Spitfire with it green and I've just corrected it. So, um, yeah, so I've sprayed that in silver. So I've picked out a light grey for the oxygen tank. It's got a bit of red there, a bit of white, some black around the place, a bit of silver. Just sort of trying to make it look a bit busy, really. Um leather straps on the uh, rudder pedals they're not the the best depiction of leather but you know they're sort of i want to make it all brighter than it normally would be to, because it's in a dark cockpit and this is going to have the canopy closed so um got a little red firing button there on the uh on the control stick 
painted those silver rams there. I must say the Ravel actual Ravel, Ravel silver is lovely, especially when it's thin. It brushes uh, it brushes beautifully um, and very controllable. So what I'm going to do now is just give it a dry brush. Now for dry brushing, I like to use Humbrol enamels. Um, I don't like dry brushing with uh, acrylic paint. I find it dries far too fast on the brush. I'd rather use enamels, it's like an oil and it gives you a lot more control. So I've got my trusty uh, post-it pad here and I'm gonna just, this is Humbrol number 90 and it's actually the first time I've ever used it. It's, um, it's like a duck egg, like a duck egg green color. So I'm just gonna brush my brush out on my post-it note here and get all of the paint off. And um, a lot of people say about pre-soaking the brush, I don't get that. So that's pretty much all gone now. So I'm going to test it first on a bit we won't be seen. And I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking that this is um, a bit too much. A bit too, uh, too garish. But like I say, down in the cockpit, when this is down inside the cockpit and it's all dark... You know, you really want, if you're going to do dry brushing and highlight some areas, then you really want want it to be seen. And as you can see, this is the beauty in using enamels for dry brushing rather than acrylics, is the brush is just, it, it's still wet. You know, the, there's still paint on there, it's still wet. And it's a, it's a flat, fairly stiff brush I'm using. And I'm just brushing it in all directions. And that's just then picked up those those ribs as you can see. So just put some more paint on the brush like that. And what I've got to try and do now, I, I'm really, I could have dry brushed this before I did the detail work, but um, I thought then the detail work might look a little garish. So just got to sort of stay away from the, from the detail work a bit, although I will be dry brushing the, um, the black with the light gray anyway just to tone it down and then I'll probably give it a, a matte varnish. But this is all done, all the, um, let's get some more paint. All the um, detail work has been done with Ravel acrylics, the ones that get in the blue plastic square bottles. Just gently go over everything. In fact, it does look okay on the black as well, this duck egg green colour or Humbrol 90, whatever it is. I have to remember that, it's, um, it's very effective. So that's, uh, that's that side all done. some more paint. I'm just taking the paint out of the neck of the uh, cat, the tin, tin lut, I think it's called. Um, save it all caking up in there. I must say my humble paints, I've got uh, quite a few and um, in fact I'll show you guys. These are my humble paints. I've got quite a few and some of them like, um, I mean this Mac, Mac cockpit green that must be 30 years old. It must be. Um, th this black green here, that must be 30 years old. But I've got some here which I've never even opened. I don't know why I've got them. Um, but I've bought them for some reason. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I've got lots there. And there's also the, um, the, the Ravel enamels as well. But uh, yeah, I've got some of the old... Um, these are um, extra colour uh, enamels. They're really, really good. And I've got some of the old white ensign for ships. If I can get that out. Yeah, there's white ensign model colours for ships. They're um, well, white ensign no longer exists. So what's that one there? That's extra colours ink chromate. So uh, yeah, they're lovely paints. And now also they they brush beautifully. But the problem is, is they stink. And um, and of course the. Uh, they take up an age to dry compared to acrylics and um, and then of course you've got to coat them every time you want to do something because if you use enamel products for weathering 
then obviously you'll destroy the the paint when you um when you put your washes on and stuff so maybe I'll do a maybe I'll do a build if I let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me see me do a build and use totally enamels and no acrylics that'll be a test and also tell me what you'd like me to build so there we go that's that one then you can see it's just just picked up on the on the corners and and highlighted everything it's even that some bolts around that unit there just sort of gives it a a bit of a better dynamic and then when you look down inside you know it kind of just it brings everything out yeah so I'll just go on and do the rest of this now and then I'll come back to you let's have a look at this engine um, as I said earlier in my review I don't think it's uh, a very good representation of a Merlin looking at this um, it looks like it's far too fat on the bottom um, I think this would probably be the shape of this would be more suited to the back of a Russian tank you know one of those Russian V12s um, anyway I'll uh, I'll get this all put together here's the sprue and you can see what I mean about the uh, the engine it's not um it's not the best it's certainly not like the Tamiya one at all so um yeah I'll get this all together now and um and I'll see you once it's built we'll see what it looks like okay as if by magic there it is there's the engine a um, couple of things to point out um, first <laughs> it's nothing like a Merlin engine that I've ever seen um, so I'll be gluing the covers on it's never going to be seen again I'll probably give it a blast of black paint around the sides in case you can see the um, you know through the apertures where the exhausts are um, but yeah, we can also see here that the fuselage is a bit misshapen. I think that should be a bit more rounded off there. Um, it's a bit sort of flat, and it's the same on the um, the spine behind the cockpit as well. But you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not rivet carrying. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a, a brown and green Spitfire. It's gonna look great. Um, so yeah, another thing. This part here, D18, the um, the actual spitter, the the shaft for the uh, propeller. Uh, it doesn't tell you not to glue it. I haven't glued it, um, but there's nothing behind it. So when you actually build it, this can all just flop about and go in and out. So all I did, I just got a bit of sprue, cut it to the right length to take up the gap between the end of the pin and the front of the engine block and just glued it onto the engine block. I guess I should have videoed it for you, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And it just stops the shaft. It just removes the end float so it can't go back in. Um, it could be now that it's too long, but better to have too much there than not enough. Better too long than too short. Hey guys. Um, and then something else I noticed, well, I, I looked at the propeller assembly, oh, it's on the back. I looked at the propeller assembly because I wanted to see um, if maybe that was, you know, supposed to be glued in and then the, the propeller slid on. But um, no, it looks like what they've done here, it's, it's a very, very strange setup. They've got the the front of the hub there going onto the actual hub with the propeller blades in it. Um, and then they've got the rear of the spinner there and the front of the spinner sandwiching all together. But then this actual plate here, this is an aluminium plate that goes over the front of the engine. It's like the, it's, it's the closing panel on the front of the cowling. And they've got that as part of the spinner. That should be actually glued on here. And then the propeller goes on and spins and that stays stationary. So... That's something worth remembering, guys. They've they've sort of, you know, made a bit of a cock up there, really. Um, and I also noticed that somebody else in one of the comments said the P-Touch tube is backwards. Uh, yep, they're correct. Um, yeah, I've got the P-Touch tube is backwards. It should be pointing forwards. So, uh, yeah, that's something else they've got wrong. Um, I think I'll make a note of that now. Um, da -da -dum -dum. So that, I can see that there then. So um, yeah, so there we go. That's the engine done. Right, so it's all had a dry brush now and it's all had a wash. So um, the wash has brought out some of the detail. Very, very faint, nothing too much. Just um, just to try and accentuate stuff a bit. Don't wanna go too mad with it. Um, what I found my experience, if you put too much wash in a cockpit, you, you tend to, the whole thing just becomes dark. You just wanna just pick out the edges um something on the back now just to try and depict some leather i've um you know a mix of 
watery brown paint just brushed it all around once that's all uh, matte varnished and everything I'll do my old own natural trick of a greasy finger just rub it on there it looks like leather then so um yeah so you can see it's dry brushed and washed the seat was dry brushed with a light tan color um you know as I say I'm not making too much fuss about this model because it's uh I mean you can see from the seat it's not particularly accurate if this was a Tamiya it'd be a lot different and then there's the um the lower wing section there with its wash and dry brush and everything and there's a bit of gloss on the instrument panel just to um add the decal and um there's the decal there so we'll see what that comes out like but um yeah let's see if it sinks back in it probably will a good bit of effort on it lots of work with uh lots of setting solutions see what happens well then guys time has come to put this decal on this instrument panel um if you're new to modeling this might interest you if you're not then you've seen it all before so you might want to switch off now um so what we've got here is some very warm water it's not hot but it's very warm um the decal the instrument panel which has been gloss coated you can see it's got a a bit of a reflection on it that's quite important to get a decal to sit down. Some people say you don't need to. I always do because it's just cheap insurance. And then I've got some at micro scale micro set here, which is a setting solution. You could always use Mr. Mark, which is pretty much the same thing. I think here is Mr. Mark. Um, I'm going to use micro set. It's fairly hot. There's the micro set and there's the micro sole. But basically what you do is you put the, the, the blue one on first, then put some more on, then dab it down. And then put the microsole on the top and just keep putting the microsole on until it settles down and i wouldn't be surprised normally decals will settle down into that textured detail the biggest problem is getting it all central and then also is making sure when they pull down they pull down straight if they pull down one way then obviously all the dials will be off and then we'll have to do some remedial work so if it does do that i can show you how to get out of it of course the other thing you could do sand it off and just put the decal on a black background um, but then you'd have a featureless uh, instrument panel which on a 30 second scale kit won't look that good um, the other thing you could do is go to air scale buy their um, <clears throat> instrument uh, dials for uh, allied aircraft and just use them instead in there so that's something I could always do because I've got them but let's just wait and see so what I'm going to do is put the decal in the hot water just dunk it under, make sure it gets all everything gets wet, and then take it out and just put it on the side there, and then wait for that to go off. That will take more than a few seconds. Just give it an extra little dunkage. Looks like I've got an area here that doesn't want to um, doesn't want to go down. Doesn't want to absorb any moisture for some reason. have some wax on it or something um, that's weird as well I'm looking on there it looks like it's got like a a sort of white if you look about two o'clock it's got like some white shape or something on there I don't know if the camera can pick that up it's weird right so that's moving now now as I suspected one of the issues oh it's going one of the worries if you see that white spot spot on your decals be very wary because that means there's a part that's not getting soaked when the rest moves you might tear it so that's moving now so what I'm going to do is get some micro set and just brush that on and I want to make sure that the area is pretty well soaked to a micro set it has no surface tension so it will just all sort of gather up in one area there we go right so that's that's all gone down now And now I'm just going to lay that on there and slide it off. Now I'm not going to push it down at all. I want to make sure that everything is all lined up. Now it's got a, um, a clear carrier foam. You can see on the outside there. So what I can do is lift that up 
and have a peek underneath and see where it's looking like. And you can see already it's starting to go down. Um, this, this decal is responding very well. Some decals like Bandai decals don't respond very well to some setting solutions. And at the end of the day, what you can do is a tip for you. You can progressively get stronger and stronger. Um, and what I found with Bandai decals, if you actually brush um, Mr. Hobby leveling thinners on them, which is a quite a hot thinner, just brush it on and then do not touch them. It makes them go down. Um, I've heard of people using Tammy Extra Thin as well to make them go down. Okay, I'm back. So um, that was easy looking through my magnifying glass. So I think that's about right now. Now, only time will tell. What I've got to do is wait for it to settle down. So I'm going to give another pretty liberal coat of this um, micro set over the top of it, which will help it to soften down. You can see it's going down really quickly. Um, what was it I did the other day and it really was struggling to go down? Oh, it was that Revell Lancaster, the 172nd, and it took a good four or five hours work not four or five hours cost the work but four or five hours on and off to get it to go down but I think this is going down pretty much straight away <clears throat> so there we can see right so now what I'm going to do you have two options you can use a cloth I'm going to use a cotton bud and be very careful how I push it down because I don't want to move it just start pushing it down from the center. And if you are new to the hobby, you know, watch this because not everybody shows this kind of thing, how to make these decals work. Um, it's, a, it's not a fairly new thing. It's, it's been around for a few years, but a lot of manufacturers do it now. They give you a decal to go over the um, contoured instrument panel. And a lot of people shy away from it and file all the detail off. Well, you can make it work. And I mean, if you do get the odd wrinkle, it doesn't really matter because the instrument panel on a second rule work half was probably wrinkle finished paint anyway. I mean, I could be wrong, but, um, you know, maybe the version you're building that one off had the wrinkle finished paint, eh? And there we go, you can see that is going down. So I'm going to leave that there and not do any more to it. And if you can pick that up in the camera, but you can see it's going down. It's picking up the um, picking up the contour underneath it. So just clean the brush off in my fingers. Put the lid back on the micro set. And then Just going to brush the micro sole on the top and this should really get it going and what will often happen now is it will wrinkle up I'm putting a lot on because I'm just going to walk away from it it dries out pretty quick especially in a room temperature in the summer it's like seconds it's gone um, I'm putting quite a lot on because I, I don't want to have to keep coming back to it so that should just sit there now for a minute or so well for a few minutes and that will start to go down so I'll um I'll leave that as it is for now and then I'll come back when it's pulled down a bit more I'm just hoping it hasn't moved I don't think it has but at the end of the day if it does move it's not the end of the road I'll show you how to get around it here you go guys this is uh what 10 minutes that I've just been playing on YouTube and just um finished editing a video for the 132nd scale Lancaster so uh, yeah today is what is it Monday the 4th of February so there we are that's uh, it's going down lovely as you can see um, what I'm doing here I'm just putting this micro sole on the top and just making sure there's no areas any big bubbles underneath if you get any air, big air bubbles underneath I don't think it can cope but uh, now this is going down really, really nice by the look of it. 
So unfortunately, it looks like I'm not going to get the opportunity on this one to show you what to do when it goes wrong. If somebody can tell me what that white thing is there, I'd be grateful. That white, it looks like a, like a clock spring almost. I get it to focus. That white thing there at about, I don't know, about one o'clock, two o'clock. Really strange, I don't know what it is. Or what it's supposed to depict. So there we are. And please tell me in the comments, guys, if you're um, fairly new to the hobby. I'd be interested to know. I, I heard something the other day. Someone was saying on another video that a lot of modellers are scared of, um, of decals. Now, I know they can be quite daunting. Um, but if you're new, please tell me, if you're new to the hobby, do um, is decals your most frightening part? Because... Uh, I'd be interested to know. I guess they, I guess the trouble with decals is if you're painting, you can always rub it down or put some primer on it and start again. But you only get one shot with decals unless you have a spare set. So, I don't know. So as we can see, this is like I don't know an hour since I started to so put it on, and you can see that it's settling down lovely. Um, and I'll just keep going. And by tomorrow, that will have probably pulled right down. And hopefully the dial faces will have pulled down slightly as well. Because what I intend to do is matte coat this and then give the dial faces a coat of gloss so they look like glass. Um, and I'll show you all that. You won't miss anything. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to leave that now to settle down. And uh, just I'll just keep putting... Um, what is it now? It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock in the evening. So I'll just keep putting um, setting agent on it until I go to bed and then in the morning hopefully it'll all gone down so that's that done um, what I want to show you now is a bit of a kneeling for these um, the seat belts on the seat the seats all done I think you saw that earlier um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use the kit seat belts I would normally be using HGW belts but on this one it's out of the box it's a fun build remember so um what I need to do is anneal them now if you look at these tweezers are great by the way the ones that normally close they're great for holding stuff like this so if I put those those parts in there, that part in there, you see that when I try and bend it, it just springs back. It's quite springy. You see that there? If I move the light up, probably get better focusing. See, that's just springy. Whereas this one here, I've already annealed. If I put it in the same. You'll see that as I touch it with my thumb, it stays there. It doesn't spring back. So it makes it a lot easier to bend and position <clears throat> the harness and make it lay down. Um, <clears throat> well, bad throat. If you're doing something like a um, like a, a frame or a, a kind of ship, you know, a crane, don't anneal the brass because it will just be all soft. You want it to be fairly rigid. So what I'm going to do is most people would use a cooker ring. Problem is with small parts like this, they get hot instantly and they'll get red and melt. So you really want to be um, going careful with the heat. So I'm just using a cigarette lighter and I just want to see it discolour. And you can see it's gone black. That's because of the um, impurities. But I just want it to discolour. So if I get it nice and hot. You can see it's discoloured. When I rub the black off, you can see it's discoloured. Dunk it in water. And then it will cool down. You can see now that's annealed. It's all um, soft. If you want to make it a bit softer, just do it again. That here fizz fizzing you can hear is the water that's inside the... Um, now really you want to get this red hot, but the problem is we're getting it red hot because it's so thin and you've got that detail on the buckle on the end. If you go too far with it, you'll get like a second and one minute it's not hot enough and the next minute it's glowing and it's just melted and the detail's all gone. So there we go, that's annealed now. And a lot of people will tell you you don't need to put it in water. Um, 
in my opinion, you do. Um, I'm an engineer. I've been aerospace. I was trained by Rolls Royce. I was always taught if you're going to anneal non-ferrous materials, you quench them. Now things like steel. If you're going to anneal steel, you see that discolouring now. Being careful not to let it go too far. Yeah, if you're going to anneal steel, when you quench it, it hardens it. So if you're going to anneal steel, you heat it up to a certain temperature and let it lay, let it cool down, and that's annealing. And then you get tempering and everything. There's all sorts of um, different heat treatment processes. Look it up on Google if you're that interested. So there we go. Now I'm not convinced that's enough on there. It's still not very soft, so I'm going to do it again. And like I say, the trouble is with this, if you put this over a gas ring, you run the risk of it just melting. You can see it, I, I can see it just starting to go red, just starting to go. I'm a little bit concerned. Of course, these tweezers are like a heat sink. Let's try um, changing ends. And I'm going to be extra careful to keep the heat away from these bits here. Because they because they're so small they will get hot very very quickly you can see now it's starting to go red there yeah, I'm happy with that now that's quite soft and then just do this one Be careful of that buckle because that buckle's so thin that'll take the heat really quickly and just melt. And literally, don't ask me how I know, it is literally a split second from going from this to melted. Just give it another hit. There is actually a video of a guy, um, I won't mention any names. He basically lays the brass down on his workbench on a tile, gets a blow lamp, goes over that and says that's annealed. I'm afraid it's not. Um, you really need to anneal the parts properly like this. Lighter is giving up. go it's starting to glow in the water right it's the morning after it's uh, Tuesday February the 5th and as we can see the instrument panel the decals settling down nicely I've just had to slice a couple of air bubbles and then I've put some more setting solution on but you can see in there if the light will catch it that the actual um, the, the decal is uh, is going down around those gauges. It's, it's pulled slightly to the right, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that. As I say, this is an out-of-box build. And if you notice this little map patch at the top, uh, schoolboy error there. Um, this is actually stuck on here with blue tack. I managed to roll the blue tack over before I painted it, which was uh, clever. So I had the black paint was on top of blue tack. So I rubbed the blue tack away and, um, and then put some matte black paint on there. Next thing that happens to this, it'll get a matte coat. And then I'll pick out the uh, instruments with a gloss coat. You'll see that when I when I do it. Um, now, looking at the instructions, after the engine was built, we did the end. We had to do the undercarriage, which I haven't done yet, um, because I moved on to the uh, interior. Well, I'd already done the interior here, and then uh, moved on to the engine. And now the instructions are a bit bitty, actually. You, know, you do the you do the interior here. And then you do the engine, then you do the undercarriage, then you do the wings, and then you start on the interior again, um, which is all a bit uh, strange. So anyway, um, I need to get these clear panels here in these wing upper sections. The wing lower section there, sprayed and weathered. Um, so 
let's get these upper wing sections out. So I need those two and need to fit these panels. Now, some people may be tempted to leave this until after the wings are put together. I would suggest doing this now, as they say, because um, because really, if they sit too low or whatever, you can always sort of play with them and, and get them dead flush and everything because you can get behind them. So I'm going to do this now um, and uh, and let's see how we go. Right, I've got all these parts cut out now, all the clear parts. These are all the um, clear panels. I doubt you can see them on there. Um, and I've now got to glue them into the wing. The, the worst of all in, is this part here, E16, and I'm sure E13 will be the same. You can see in the instructions, they're showing that as a vertical, to fit it vertically, this, this little flap here. And um, that little flap is basically what it is when the flaps are, when the undercarriage are, um, are down, I think, or just when the flaps are down, that a little um, ball pops up so the pilot can see that the, the flaps are down. And um, basically, the, on my model, the flaps will be up, so that would be actually flush, although they're showing it open. So um, I'll be building this with the flaps up, and therefore that would be flush. Getting it to fit is an absolute nightmare. It takes a lot of work. You can see it's a, a bit of an awkward shape, um, and the, sort of the radius is too small, but it's too wide at the bottom. So in the end, what I've done is just sort of file it down till it fits. And then holding the wing flat this way, I've just put it in from behind and pushed it through. So I'm just going to put a little dab of um, extra thin on the back to hold it in place. Um, and see what it looks like once it's gone off. But it's, um, no, it's not, it's sort of, it's like a square peg in a round hole really. So we'll see how that looks after the glue's gone off. I'll probably put some Mr. Service around it and then wipe it over with a uh, cotton bud and it'll sort of give us an even line then. So onto these clear parts, I've done a quick test fit and they do seem to fit really well. Um, so we've got this one here, GP12, which goes on the outside. And we can see here that it's showing this little square section. There's a little, little moulding on there. Um, goes aft, so that's easy to do. So we position that one and that seems to fit lovely. And what I'm going to do is put some extra thin in from behind. But I'm making sure that my finger isn't on the seam. Because if I put my finger on the seam and then put the glue in, the glue will run up over my finger. And um, so it's just very, very quickly, just dab some glue in there. So it holds it, but don't get, don't allow the glue to capillary up onto your finger. So that's that. Quite why they've made these in clear, I don't know, but because um, you can't really see much through them anyway, they're so bloody thick. So that's that. They seem to fit quite well, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to go overboard with the with the glue. Uh, I'm also not going to be sort of too sparing with it because I don't want them to fall out. Now this panel here, um, there are, there is some rivet detail on there, but my concern is is making sure you get it the right way up, for one. So you need to make sure, and that's the wrong panel. <laughs> So that's never going to fit. Um, there is a there is obviously a curve to them, so make sure you get them the right way up. And also, but there's no indication to show which way it goes. And what I found is there's four, if you can see them, there's four rivets in there. There's nothing, there's no rivets here, and it seems to fit better with the rivets facing forward. Um, and you may also notice I've sanded the top surface of the wing. There was a great big bulge here behind it, which um, affected the fit. My plan is once this is these are fitted and gone off, then I will be um, giving the wing a sand anyway, sanding over the surface, just to try and sort of level things out a bit. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a wartime aircraft. The wing surface probably wouldn't have been perfect. You probably would have seen some witness of the gun, you know, the gun ports there. But uh, I mean, it's probably good enough as it is. It's it, they do fit very, very well. I must be honest. Fair play to Hobby Boss. Um, now this one here, this P7 part goes on top of GP4. So we need to make sure we put uh, GP4 in first. So that's just going to sit there like that. And I can just dab some glue into there. And then some into the back there. 
But obviously if you are using these as clear parts, you're going to need to be a lot more careful than I am. That little panel there is going to be the bane of my life. It's awful. I'll just leave that and sand it after. Um, so now that's in like that. Now this one here, it's difficult to know which way it goes. You kind of put it in and it sort of feels flush. Whereas it's like step at the back and then you you take it out, turn it round. And I guess that feels better. But there's no real indication as to which way these panels go in. So that's glued there now, that's not going to come out. And then finally we put this one here. That'll just pop in there. And again that fits lovely. It's probably a little touch low at the back. But once you push that front corner down it sort of sorts itself out. So I think I'll put some on there as well. There we go. This is the beauty of doing this with it, the wing still in two halves. I can now get behind and just move that around to get it perfect. Or as near as done it. And there we go, that's those panels in. So um, I'll get on and do the other side and then I'll come back with the lower wing. Right, so I've done all this now, so these um, these covers are all in place. <clears throat> I'll let those go off and then I'll give them a prime and a sand down just to check they're all flush. Um, <clears throat> I'll do that before I fit them to the bottom wings as well and then if I need to push them up from behind I can. Uh, I've assembled these machine guns. Um, ejector shoots here you don't need to worry about because you can't see them from underneath. Um, these the cannons here. I haven't bothered with the um, the actual uh, cartridges, whatever you call them, and I haven't bothered with the um, the tracks here either. Uh, they're for the spares box; they'll come in handy for something. Um, and just one other thing I've noted is when you actually build these machine guns, obviously you've got two sides, and uh, they are different: three and four, and then three and four. Um, but it's worth noting that you need to cut. I actually glued them in place and then realised if you leave that machine gun in place at the back it does affect the fit of the wing. Um, <clears throat> if I can just show you quickly. It does stop the wing closing up there. So um, you know, if you're not going to have them on show just hack the back off. Hack the sort of back 6mm off um, because it, it doesn't allow it to shut to allow the wing to close up properly. So uh, that's that done there. Now I need to assemble the ailerons here. Um, I'm going to slot them in afterwards. So we're pretty much getting there now. Um, <clears throat> let's have a quick look at the instrument panel, see how that's going. And that's all settled down lovely. That's probably very close now to having a, a matte varnish and then doing the uh, dials as I said earlier. So uh, let me let all this go off, then I'll do some Mr. Surfacer and then I'll come back with the instrument panel. Okay, as promised, here's the instrument panel, matte coated, and as you can see, nothing wrong with the decal at all. It's uh, It has moved a bit to the right, but you know I'm not going to worry too much about that. You can see that you, know, you can get a half decent effect. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a brush prepared here with... Uh, some dark grey oil paint or enamel should I say and I'm just brushing it off on my uh, trusty post-it note and I'm going to give the instrument panel a very light dry brushing with dark grey just to pick up the edges of those um, bezels and any raised areas it just gives it a bit more interest and then once this is all done, I've done the glass and everything, I'll, I'll put some colour about it. You know, I think it's going to have some coloured bezels and stuff. So I'll have to check my references for that. But uh, there we go. That's just given it a bit of a... You can hardly notice it, but that's what it's all about. Subtlety is king. Um, 
it's just you know it's just it's just giving it that bit of an edge so I'll put that to one side now put the lid back on my dark grey oil paint that's about 66 umbral now that's done so you can see now the instrument panel is done and it's great but the glasses the glass on the dials needs to be picked out so I'll do a couple of these for you now on camera and then I'll do the rest off because I need to be um in fact I'll see if I can get my glass so I can look at it through the glass and you can see what I'm doing too I think that works so if I just dab some on there and just move it around there we go and I'm putting it on thick purposely because I want it to um level out the more you put on there the easier it is it'll it'll if you if you put too much on it'll run over the edges if you don't put enough on then you won't get um you won't get the effect what you're looking for is is glass obviously Just pushing it around like that. And if you notice, well, I'm not using a tiny brush. So many people are tempted by using tiny brushes all the time. But the problem with the tiny brush is it holds so little paint. By the time you get, especially with acrylics, by the time you get to the, I mean, this is a number two. Um, as soon as you get to the work you want to do, the bloody paint on the brush is all dried out. There we go, that's that pretty much done. And remember this is all from using the standard kit instrument panel. So it's the kit instrument panel, it's the kit decal. And it's just a bit of love and care and putting it on and a bit of extra time. And you end up with a um, with a perfectly presentable instrument panel. When I say that, I mean it's perfectly presentable for for a kit of this level. And there you go. You can see that that's that's looking nice, and then I'll get some detail added to it, and that's that. Who needs photo etch, eh? Okay guys, so uh, where are we with this build now? Um, <clears throat> we've got the instrument panel done and I've glued it onto the uh, pedals, the uh, rudder pedal frame. So we can see the instrument panel's done there. A little bit of colour, there's a red frame, a green, uh, sorry, red bezel, green bezel and a yellow panel in there. That's the only colour I could find on the instrument panel. So, um, so that's all done now. You can see with the reflection it's got its... Uh, glass gauges in and that is just basically using the kit decal so um yeah that's uh, that's all done seats uh, all done i've used my own naturel you get some um, skin grease rub it on the matte varnish on the uh, leather cushion there and i've got a bit of plastic stuck to it there by the look of it and uh and that just gives it a bit of a gentle sheen um, <clears throat> I've done the seat belts as you've seen uh, last night I did the um, the annealing on them so they need to be done and painted before they go in um, we've done the cockpits inside so they're all done dry brushed uh, and given an oil wash um, and the same on that side again it's got this very very slight sheen very very slight sheen um, the machine gun covers are in the wings and there I'm waiting for the soup the mister servers are here to dry and then I can rub that down over those flap panels flap uh, notification panels I guess you call them um, you can see rubbing this away the detail is disappearing off of there I'm not going to worry about that um, I've painted the sky sky duck egg uh, green color inside the um, undercarriage bays there and you can see I've done the same on that side and same again with the gun panels and the the panel on the back um <clears throat> got some actuators here in the 
in the undercarriage bays I've got to paint them green yet just in case they can be seen through the cockpit all the guns and remember I sliced half of the machine gun away here at the back um, so that the top wing fits the upper wing fits properly and again we painted in the uh, undercarriage bays with the the duck egg green sky green color there um, so I think because these videos tend to get so long oh, I've got the engine done as well there's the engine ready to go in I need to paint the side of the engine black just in case it can be seen through the cowling through it, around the exhausts um, I've also built up the fuel tank but I doubt if I'll put that in well, I might put it in because it might give a bit of rigidity to the fuselage but uh, yeah we've got the fuel tank there that goes in just slots in like that um, and that is pretty much that I've got a few parts here in the spares box um, the uh, ammo belts oh I've got the um, the machine gun sight to put in as well I've got to paint that and everything I'll put that in last just before I put the canopy on um, and that's it really there's not really much left in the in the box to speak of uh, I've got to um, do some riveting on those um, those upper tail planes let go go away um, you can see this is the lower side this is the upper side they've got the lower side riveted but the upper side is done like fabric so I've got to sand all that down um, retain that scribe line around the front but then re-rivet uh, around on the on the top there on the the top surfaces to match the uh, the bottom um, and the, the the elevators and the fin they should all be um, linen anyway linen covered so or fabric should I say so yeah there's not a hell of a lot left to do on it um, so I think what we'll do is we'll call that a wrap for this being part one part two I think we'll assemble the fuselage get the belts in um, put the wings together get the wings and the fuselage up together scribe the tail planes and everything and then I think part three uh, well I'll finish it off and I think part three then can be painting and weathering so um thanks for watching um if you've liked this please like and subscribe if you haven't liked it then tell me why um and and if you, if you want to see any other kits built or any reviews done just let me know and I'll do my best so um bye for now and I'll see you all soon